Hello guys, here is uh, Roberto Colombo and in this tutorial I will show you how to create an animation uh, for an object so that the animation is uh, driven by an audio file. So given the audio file, I connect the volume uh, during the evolution of the wave of the audio file, the animation will uh, follow it. How the animation will follow? I, I will show you a basic example where I change the size of a cube according to the music then uh, I will give you some uh, additional information and uh, finally I will create uh, a typical user case that I think was also discussed uh, somewhere in the Revolution forum uh, in the past so how to create a 3D VU matter so this beautiful uh, LED that we have in a car radio or wherever that uh, uh, are going up and down with the music. In this case I will do something similar but in 3D, so a parallel piped that is expanding in the Z direction according to the music. Ok, so let's get going. To do this uh, I will use uh, the, the integration uh, of uh, I clone with Blender. Blender is a free software available under www.blender.org is a quite complex software that can do really a lot of stuff and uh, I found that uh, when something can really be done in iClone because uh, iClone is a wonderful software uh, to do uh, great animation but it has its own limit and when you are to this limit you are an end point Blender is there to help you and this is one case because uh, you can of course uh, animate uh, uh, anything with the, in, in time with the music, do it manually, good luck, after three years maybe you are still there doing it. In Blender I will show you that this is just three click and in less than one minute we have done the task. So let's get going. Here is Blender, uh, in the default scene I have my cube that is going to be animated, a camera is this uh, strange object here on the left, a lamp, don't focus so much about these two, we can also remove but it's okay. Uh, okay. The cube is, uh, is here, how can I animate? So, to animate the cube I use uh, the scripting engine of Blender. Blender has a, an internal scripting engine based on a Python language and uh, using uh, this language I can create a script, a program and do uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of cool stuff, one is uh, the, the case of this tutorial. So, how to create a script? First I need to open a, a, a window, a text editor window. So look at this uh, triangle here, it's just slowly bring down and I create a new window. And now I want to change the type of the window here. Clicking here I have all the possible different window type of Blender. I select text editor. And to enable the capability to write something I click new. Now I can write what I want. Okay, let's go. Here I will uh, plug in my software, my script, and then click run script to execute. So I can type about that because I already prepared it. Not because I'm lazy, but to be faster, don't waste too much of your time. I copy past here. Okay, that's my wonderful, cool, awesome, amazing script. Three instructions, and with three instructions I create what I need. So let, uh, before uh, running it, uh, just uh, let me explain a bit what uh, here we are doing. So first uh, import BPY. BPY stands for Blender Python and uh, with import I can, uh, I am telling uh, Blender to import all uh, the, the, the library functionality that are embedded into this uh, Python engine uh, language program. So then the next instruction I'm telling Blender to change this window, this one that we just created and I changed it, I, I have set as a text editor. I want to change as graph editor. So it's going to be changed to something like this. Why I need this? Because later on here I have an instruction that work in the context of, of a graph editor uh, window. So I need to change before the window to graph editor. Okay, done. when this is done uh, the next instruction is this. This is the first magic thing. So here, this instruction tell Blender to create a curve that determine 
how my object change according to some input data and this curve is uh, is like if I were putting a, a key for each frame of my this is the timeline of blender by the way I have uh, 250 frame from 1 till 250 it's like if uh, each frame I put a value that determines some transformation of this object and this value basically is represented by a curve that is created by some data and uh, so here I'm telling you to do this, uh, this uh, data and uh, creating this curve that uh, at the end of the day uh, determines some transformation of the object and what is the transformation I'm going to do is written here this is a, is a fixed keyword of blending that tell, uh, tells uh, uh, Blender to uh, scale this cube so that was uh, the original idea I want to scale this cube so that is a uh, imploding, exploding in time with the music and that's the, the way to write it to achieve this. This is a fixed uh, keyword, I need just to write exactly like this. In reality you can do a lot of other stuff, not just uh, change the scale. Here's a list of uh, all the keywords that can, you can substitute here with this one. You can change uh, the location, uh, sorry, the rotation, the location, so you can imagine to have uh, your cube dancing around uh, with the music uh, or rotating uh, around itself at uh, the speed that uh, probably depends uh, somehow on the, on the music and so on. Just <coughs> sorry, one word of notice about the, the fact that we have location scaling but we have also visual scaling built in KSY. The difference between this one and this one is that when I, I use this keyword then uh, the transformation, in this case the scaling, also is a constraint by a constraint. If I put a constraint in Blender I can add some constraint that limit some transformation and if I want this constraint to be uh, effective I need to use uh, this uh, keyword. Okay, so now uh, last instruction. The last instruction tells Blender where the data to create this curve that in turn will generate uh, all the value during the animation that uh, at the end of the day determine the transformation of my object uh, where this data is coming from and this is telling to take from a file, a, a audio file uh, this is the operator uh, that uh, is doing the, the job and here I'm telling where is the file so this is my file, the right part, okay, put just a backslash but not so much difference so make sure uh, later uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the post uh, of this uh, forum I copy paste this uh, few instructions make sure to substitute uh, this uh, string with uh, your exact uh, path and file name pay attention if it's not uh, exactly the same and you run then the script you will get an error displayed uh, somewhere around here but uh, if everything is okay, if the file name is okay the, directory is, uh, is perfectly copy pasted then you run the script and magic something magic happened the audio file was read and converted into a curve and each point of the curve here this is the time each point of the curve tell what is the scale of my object object in fact here at the beginning you see that the volume of the file audio file was uh, zero here start to play a bit later and in fact the scale is at zero I checked uh, with the WAV file WAV is an important file I checked it with MP3 also was important file so there's not such a big problem to import different type of uh, files now uh, okay let's first uh, play it and see what's happened you see the cube is following the audio so where is uh, at the peak the cube is maximum and then goes down where the, the volume was lower and so on so uh, this cube I can uh, now export into a clone but uh, I can tell you that if you do this because uh, at the beginning there are a lot of uh, probably frame with uh, zero sides for some reason so this change is not able to import animation correctly so uh, this will not happen if you have an audio file that starts with a big volume since the very first, uh, uh, very first frame or a fraction of second but in this case this audio file is uh, the volume is picking up uh, slowly and this uh, 
create a cube that has a zero dimension basically. The dimension, if I click here, I can see some properties and here is that the scale you see is basically zero. And this creates some problem with the uh, it's an exchange because that exchange probably will read, I'm not sure how it's working, but it looks like it's reading uh, uh, the size at the very beginning, it will be zero. So something goes wrong. So how to fix this? We add a constraint here, this, uh, this chain. And here I can add a new constraint, constraint to this object and I constrain the scale. I will limit it so that this minimum the x will be 0.1, minimum 0.1 for example, z 0.1, just a number, you can add whatever you like. You see that cube now has a minimum size. Here the reported size is still 0, but anyway the 3D view will take this as the, the clamped value, minimum clamped value, so it cannot be lower than 0.1. In fact now if we play, you see that the cube is moving but it's never going smaller than 0.1 for example if I move here the minimum remain fixed to this position the, the, to this size sorry so now uh, everything's done let's uh, see if uh, I can import in a clone and uh, have it uh, working as it is so I go to export FBX here uh, let's point to the directory where I want to export my data it uh, animated cube FBX. make sure here you press mesh because here you are selecting what you want to export you don't want to export into the file the camera the lamp and other stuff just the, the cube the mesh of the cube and click export FBX. finish there is no confirmation and uh, that's uh, what the blend is doing uh, the file was written now we go into to the exchange i'm using still to exchange number five version five because i haven't bought the six yet but uh, I'm pretty much sure it should work also in version 6. So now I open my animated cube. Make sure you have import animation selected. I import. And now I select the cube. Here my animation is here. I select and play. And you see that the cube is moving. Just zoom out a bit. And the cube is moving. So the last things I have to do is to export a clone, I call it animated cube, export animation, make sure you click this uh, checkbox, otherwise your cube, cube is going to be a boring dead still uh, object. Okay, I already had it, but I replace it. And now I will import in a clone, let's create a new project. Okay, and first of all, here is my animated cube. And let's play it. Okay, and the cube is moving. Cool. So that's uh, the first goal was uh, to create an animation uh, based on the music. Now, if you render a part of this animation and uh, and start the video file with your audio, you will see that uh, they are exactly in sync. Cool. Now, uh, this is, uh, is okay so far. Uh, already I hope uh, you enjoy it, but it's not the end. It's not the end because uh, that's a very trivial example. Let's do something more interesting. So creating this uh, boom meter that is uh, a parallel piped that uh, goes up and down, expand the, the sides in vertical, up and down according to the music. So I go back to uh, Blender. How to do this? So, first of all, uh, we have two problems here. First is that when I play the cube, okay, I play a reverse, but it doesn't matter. The cube anyway is pending in all the direction. And second problem is that when I move, you see that the base of the cube, oh, let's move out a bit. The base of the cube is moving, so this base goes up and down. If I go here, it's easy to see. The base now is here. I move base now is here, it's, it's, it's translating in vertical dimension, now the base is here before it was here, so I want the base to be fixed and moving only in one direction. So how to do this? So first one, one problem at a time. For first let's remove the expansion in the x and y direction, that's pretty much easy. 
here in the graph editor window I have this uh, visual scaling that is uh, the cur cur curve that I generated which in reality is three curve is uh, the curve for x y and z so I just need to get rid of these two so I select x scale channel oh, sorry channel delete channel and axis disappear then y channel delete channel now play See, it's moving only in the z-direction because I removed the, the transformation on the x and y. Cool. Now, the last thing I have to do is to fix the base. To fix the base, uh, okay, there could be different uh, solution. The one that I found uh, quite uh, useful is to create a driver. A driver uh, that uh, will do the same. So, first of all, what is a driver? A driver is uh, something that is driving. Right? Genius. Anyway, a driver is uh, imagine uh, your bike biking on your bicycle, uh, your feet are moving and your feet are the driver of the bicycle. The movement of your feet is making the, the bicycle uh, going. So here, the, the idea is the following. Because uh, this base is moving up and down, okay, imagine when this base goes here, if I'm able to translate the full cube up so that at the end the expansion till here plus a translation of the full cube let the base be fixed at the same position and done like to say i want to drive the z location here this one in a way that now is fixed to zero is the pivot point of the cube that is represented here is fixed to zero but if i move the wall object up and down following the the expansion i i have my result done so how to do this? First of all, to do this, I need to, I need to get rid of this constraint. If I do something like this, I put the cube with the sides minimum of the x and y to 0, 1. So the cube has no vertical sides. Okay, so... Uh, now I create a driver, so how to create a driver? Here, in the location, in the Z location, I right click with my mouse, it opens a pop-up menu and I create add single driver. Add single driver, make these uh, properties becoming violet, so this means this property now is controlled by somebody. And now I need to characterize this somebody, how this, uh, this number is, uh, is uh, generated by who so I go again back to my graph window and change here to driver so this uh, this window can change can show you the curve that is generating some uh, animation uh, constraint uh, uh, some key of the keyword of the animation and the driver also so I have my Z location now is represented here as soon as I create a driver here I have this driver here and here I can open the properties of this driver and here I will characterize it so forget about this parameter, you can leave as they are. Forget also about this error, it will disappear soon. First of all, we need to tell who is driving this Z location. So here I select the cube and I tell that the Z scale of the cube will be the input to this number. Because at the end the driver is something that generates a number that will place it, place it here. So the number is generated by the Z scale. And how this number goes into generated here, goes into here, is, is decided here by this uh, uh, option. So here I can choose any one of some value, average value, no different. Because in reality this is quite powerful. I can console some properties with the multiple inputs. Here I have only one, just the value of the Z scale, this one, that is uh, uh, generating a number that we plug it in here. So if I do an average, average of one single number is a number itself. The sum of one single number is a number itself, so no difference. So this is the mathematical formula, let's say, this is the input and this is the output. I like to say Z equal average of Z scale, which is only one number, so it's a Z scale. Okay, so uh, that's all, and this is done. But we will see something soon that should be changed. Uh, 
let's play first. You see that still the cube bounces a bit. It's mostly doing what we want, but it's still moving up and down. So how to change it? I change this to transform space. Okay. Let's play it again. Now the cube is well fixed on the ground and following the music. Why this transform space is making the magic? I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I just tried. I'm sure here in the forum there is somebody, probably one person that I don't want to mention here, but has a, such a deep know-how that will explain perfectly with some color and text and upper and lower case why this happened, why the transform, transform space keep the base locked to the ground. For me, it's just that uh, sometimes theoretical, sometimes empirical, and I try to experiment and find the solution. Anyway, so that's uh, my bouncing uh, CD V-Meter, which uh, let's export again. I have already set it ready, let's uh, call it animated V-Meter uh, or CD V-Meter. Go into here, the import. Everything should be selected. Here's my view meter. You see, now it says just a flat plane. No problem for a uh, text change. You can recognize it as a problem because anyway, there's some kind of dimension. And then I select here. And oh, that is plane. Plane pretty much okay. And then I can export to a clone, export animation, remember to click all those things. Oop, I think I saw overwritten maybe, no, it's okay. So, yeah, we it. Now let's go to the file explorer. And here it is, my CD view meta prop, which I put here. Oh, much better than that. And that's the end of the tutorial. So, of course, this is just an example. You can use your fantasy inventive to create much more things once you have understood the technique. And I haven't experimented yet other stuff, but uh, for example, you can create some 3D letter that uh, change, rotate, uh, change in size according to the music, uh, and so on. So, I let you create uh, things and uh, let's see what uh, you can uh, end up uh, into. Thanks for watching, I hope it was uh, beautiful and uh, see you next time. Bye!